Managing and being part of an end-to-end -end project is more valuable than working in a very large and a complex data project where somebody has already built all the layers and you are just writing complex SQL logic to transform your data. These business specific SQL transformation may have no or very little value when you go for your next project or next job. Working on an end-to-end -end data project helps you to understand many design consideration and approach A versus approach B experience and why to choose a particular approach for a given business situation. Is this approach easy to build and deploy or is it cost efficient or fast enough or easily maintainable and many more dimension of building a data project can be learned by being part of an end-to-end -end project. You don't need a very complex enterprise grade use case to gain experience building an end-to-end -end data project. Even with a small problem statement, you can build complete solution and gain lot of good experience. So in this end-to-end -end data project, we are going to work with cricket match data set as a domain, gain insight once data is available in consumable form in the Snowflake data warehouse. The data set is not very huge, but it is deep nested JSON data file. If you understand this sport or a cricket lover, you would really enjoy working on this end-to-end -end project. We will use SQL statement throughout this project for loading data and for transformation, but we would not pay much attention on SQL syntax or its purpose. Rather, we will focus more on design activities, data profiling activities, and how to build different layers or a so-called zone and finally create dimensional modeling from this data set. Welcome back to my channel, Data Engineering Simplified. This guide is hands-on and has many SQL script. It talks about data and table design and explain data warehouse concept. It's a bit long, but I hope you would watch the whole video because it covers interesting situations. This will help you to get better at designing with JSON data and tables in Snowflake. You can practice with sample data and code provided in this video or after finishing the course. Check the description below for instruction on how you can access the sample JSON dataset as well as the SQL script used in this video tutorial. If you have any technical questions, need architectural advice, what's guidance on starting or migrating legacy to Snowflake kind of a data project, do not hesitate to reach out to me on my Instagram account. Many talented Snowflake developers are learning and growing quickly. If you would like to join this exciting journey, be part of my exclusive Facebook group. I am curious to have you on board. You can scan the QR code or find the link in the description section below to join this exclusive Facebook group. And yes, if you are really passionate about managing your ETL workload more programmatically using Snowflake Snowpark Python API and bring efficiency to your day-to-day -day development activities and stay away from those boring DDL and DML creation work, you can look into my Udemy courses. They include comprehensive source code and practical example to guide you. You can also find the link in the description section. Let's quickly understand how this JSON data file looks like. Each international cricket match is an event and that event is captured as a JSON file. At root, we have total three elements called meta, info, and innings. Let me expand the first element called meta. This element primarily explains what is the data version, what time it is created, and what is the revision. This does not have any specific information about the cricket match. Next, we have information. And this information capture everything about the match level. So if you look into the detail, this balls per over, city, date, event, gender, match type, and so on. So if I try to look into in a visual form, this is my root. And from the root, this is my info. And this info matches with this info. And this info has total 10 different elements. And let's try to understand what all those 10 elements are. So if I look into this part, here I have a balls per over, city, gender, match type, match type number, over, season, team type, and venue. Okay. 
and all this information is primarily matching with this information here. So this is the information which captures all the detail at match as an event level. Next, we have ENI. In the international cricket match, we have two teams and it comprises two innings. And that inning detail itself is a root element. It says innings because in a test match, you can have total four innings, but in one day we have a two innings. So this line represents first inning. And in the first inning, we have a total 50 overs as represented here. It is a part of information. This JSON file starts with over zero, followed by each of the ball detail. And that's how this entire JSON file is constructed. Let me show you in a visual form. So if you look into this innings is nothing but an array and it has total two element, element one and element two. And uh, here it is a first element. It says India and overs for simplicity. I have kept only two overs and there are three power plays. So this is how this entire JSON file is constructed and it is a deeply nested JSON. And this JSON file will be used as a source file and it will be further processed and flattened. All the 50 overs by each of this team, this JSON file is pretty complex and deeply nested. And that's what we are going to learn, how to flatten this JSON file and extract all the information. What comes to your mind when we say, let's draw the end-to-end -end data flow and data processing component and diagram. We start with the source system that is either producing data or providing data to our data platform team. In this example, we are assuming that match data will be provided by an API source. To extract and store the API data, we typically use a serverless component. And in our example, we can consider AWS Lambda service that will connect to the data source system, extract data from the API and store it in AWS S3 bucket. So far, everything is happening outside of the Snowflake instance. In the next step, we need to consider how to load data into the Snowflake environment. In the Snowflake or any data warehouse system, we follow a layered architecture and we logically name those layers. So in our case, we are naming them as landing layer, followed by raw layer, followed by clean layer, and finally we have consumption layer. Now, before bringing data into the Snowflake environment from external object storage layer, we generally create named stages and file formats. By using these two objects, the external data set can be analyzed using dollar notation. Both these two objects, the stage plus the file format are schema level object and in our diagram, it will reside inside the landing schema. Once data is profiled and analyzed, at the root level of the JSON data file, it needs to be flattened and stored inside the Snowflake tables as a variant column. Since it is a deep nested JSON data file, the nested object needs to be further analyzed and profiled. All this processing will happen in the raw layer where all the extracted elements will be stored without any cleansing activities. To store the data at more granular level, it needs further flattening and from semi-structured format, we will store them in a structured format inside a Snowflake table. We will also bring the standardized field values for further understanding and refine them as needed. Once we store the clean data inside the clean layer, we will create consumption layer. Data will reside in fact and dimension format and finally reports or BI dashboard can be created on the top of it. If you want to replace the same architecture with Azure Stack, then your data extraction and object storage process may look like this. You can use other services from Azure to connect to API and consume it. But Azure ADF services allows you to connect to any API sources along with watermarking and other features. So this is a very common architectural pattern when data needs to be extracted using Azure data services. In this tutorial, we are not going to use any external name stage as this creates additional complexity and setup challenges that will not allow you to if you would like to learn and try them using Snowflake free trial edition. So for the simplicity, we will only focus in the Snowflake instance using Snowflake free trial edition and will not have any external dependencies like AWS or Azure for any external named stages. Honestly speaking, it really does not matter. 
in general you will have an integration services and your external named stage will already be configured your job is to start working from the landing layer so if you are not going to use external named stages then how we are going to load the data we will use snow site web ui to load the json file into the internal named stages this internal named stage will mimic as if it is external named stage so if you want to tag number of each steps it would look like this loading the json cricket data set via snow site web ui loading feature step 2 data profiling and root level json data analysis step 3 storing data and further json flattening and data analysis step 4 data cleansing followed by filtering the bad record step 5 consumption layer where we will work on the fact and dimension table step 6 where your bi layer or dashboard layer will consume data from your consumption layer and step 7 the new data will continue to arrive and follow this step 1 to step 5 and the dashboard will refresh automatically without any code change before we proceed let's quickly talk about the dependencies that are required to complete this end to end project if you are using snowflake free trial edition i would request to use enterprise edition on aws cloud you can use any text editor my preference is vs code since we are dealing with json file i would prefer to have some kind of json file visualizer to load the json data into snowflake we are going to use snow site web ui and its data loader feature for data cleaning and data transformation we will use snow site worksheet and via sql statement we will perform most of the operation for final visualization we are going to use snow site dashboard so except the text editor and json file visualizer everything can be done through the snowflake free trial edition before we jump into our snow site web ui and start writing some sql script let's understand what we would do first we will create a database called cricket and we'll have four different schema named land raw clean and consumption we will create a file format of type json and a stage location where json data will be loaded using snow site web ui i will also load bulk data using snow sql cli in this demo as i have a lot of json data file for this demonstration loading a lot of file in snow site is a challenge because snow site allows only 50 mb of data set at one go and if i have to do it for many files it has to be repeated multiple times and i just want to avoid that so let's jump into our snow site web ui this is my first worksheet called schema creation let me switch the role and also select a warehouse So my role is selected and my compute warehouse is also selected now i am going to create a database called cricket and then i will create four different schema land raw clean and consumption i can see land raw clean and consumption this four different schema got created and they are all under database cricket now next i am going to use schema cricket dot land and i will create a file format as well as stage inside this land schema so my schema got changed now next i am going to create a file format called my json format and the type is json and strip outer array equals to true so my file format got created i am going to create a stage called my stage and this stage will be created under my cricket dot land schema so my stage got created good now let's see if i have any file available inside this location or not i do not have any file now i would go back to my 
home page so this is my file format and this is my stage both these objects are created under land schema now when i select my stage location i can enable the directory so my directory is enabled let me add files i have selected total 8 json file so this is the context under which all those json file will reside so let me click on upload so all these eight files got uploaded inside my stage location now let me go back to worksheet if i execute this list command to list down all the files let's see what result does it bring all the json file which i uploaded through my web ui is visible so right now i have only eight files i am going to upload all the files via SnowSQL CLI and it may take a while. Let's take one of the file which is 66358JSON. Okay, let me copy this. Now, if you look into this query, the line number 34242, here I am using my JSON file format and using the dollar notation to query the data. If you look into the dollar one followed by meta, dollar one info and dollar one innings. So this is primarily map to this meta info and innings element so if i double click on one of the element it says root dot info so this is how i can access root dot info followed by balls per over i can access this information through dollar notation let me go back to my snow site web ui and let's run this command and let's see what data does it bring for double six three five eight so if you look into the meta information i have created date version and revision if i go for info i have a lot of detail for info and then finally i have this innings and if you look into the inning i have this number of overs and everything is visible and then i also populated additional information that this is my file name this is my row number so my data got uploaded successfully and i am able to parse the data through my dollar notation so so far good now let's load all the one day international data file into our stage location using SnowSQL CLI. So let's see how many JSON file do I have. So I have a quite a lot of JSON file. Let's connect to SnowSQL and try to push the data. So this is my put command which will pick all the JSON file from this location and it will place the JSON file in my stage cricket JSON stage location with parallel thread equals to 50. It may take a while so I will fast forward from here and come back once all the data is loaded into my stage location. 123 seconds to load all the 2411 records and so all the data got loaded into JSON GZ format. Let's go back to our worksheet and quickly check whether it represent 2411 record set or not. Let me execute this list command. So if I hover, it has 2411. I already deleted the data set which I loaded through my Snow site because I just want to make sure that all the data loaded at one go using my SnowSQL CLI because it is much faster than web UI. So now all our data got loaded successfully and even if I pick one of the row from here and let's execute this select statement. It is still functioning and you can see this data is created on 2017. So this is how my data set looks like. All good. We got our data loaded into a stage location that exists within the land schema. And now we will execute a copy command to load data into a raw layer table. Once all the JSON data is loaded into a snowflake table, we will further analyze the data as well as the path to extract the individual element from the JSON document and try to convert the semi-structured data into a structured table format. Another worksheet called raw zone. We have already seen that this is my stage and this is my JSON format and this is my land schema. Now, if you look into the raw schema, I do not have any object available in the raw schema. So I'm quickly changing my context. I can also do it using the SQL command. 
So let's create a table inside the raw layer. The name of the table is called match raw table and it has three different columns. The first column is meta, second is info and third is ini. The data type for the meta column is object. The data type for info column is variant and the data type for ini columns is, is an array. So if you look into this meta information, we can create a variant column or we can create an object column. But in this case, I am storing this entire content as an object. And if I have to access the object, the object is having a key pair value, which is a date version created and revision. If I look into the info, so the next root element is info element. Info element has a lot of sub element and this is at the match level. So for example, if you see how many balls are there per over, which city this cricket is played, gender, match type, match type number, over, season, team type and venue. So this is one to one mapping for the match. Similarly, we have a date and if you look into the date, the match is held on 29th of October 2023. This is just one single element and if I have to access this element, I have to go to root.info.date0 because if it is a test match, it will go for three or four or five days. There are different information, for example, event. So this is an event element which says that it is ICICI Cricket World Cup and this is a 29th match. And here I have match referee, uh, the name of the match referee and the match empire and TV empire and empires. Okay. So here, if you have to reach to the empire element, it has to be the path is info dot officials dot umpires and if i have two umpires then the first umpire can be reached through the index zero and the second umpire can be reached through the index one so this entire info will be, will be stored as a variant column and third we have a ini column so ini column is nothing but a collection of array if you look into the ini column ini column is in a collection of element there are two elements in the ini column so this is my inning column which has two element and each element contains the name of the team and the team has played number of overs and the team has a power play and inside the number of over it is start with a zero over and lot more details are there we will analyze it in the later part of this video let me go back to my snow site web page so i'm going to create this table and if you look into this four additional column which is nothing but a stage file name a stage row number this is a file hash key and the modified timestamp when i'm processing a lot of data files i would like to keep an audit record when this file has come what was the hash key which particular line number is represented by this row in your json file if it is a multi-line json file and so on so let me create this table so my table got created successfully. So here is my copy command. This is not a direct copy from the stage location because I need to really extract the JSON file into a different object. So let me execute this copy command. I got the result. All the data set is loaded and it says that 2411k got loaded. If I quickly scroll down, I do not see any error. Let's quickly check how the query profile looks like. So the total execution time is 30 seconds. So here it is clearly saying that it has scanned the internal stage. If you are loading data from external named stages, this will indicate that the data has been copied from external named stage. If you look into this statistics, it has total written 19.64 MB of file. External byte scan is 9.99. The data got inserted into cricket.raw.match raw table. Now let me execute this select count from the raw table. So I have total 2410. It means one of the file had a problem and I do not know what was that problem, but we can check that. And let's see how the data looks like by fetching the first 10 record. So this is my meta field. This is my info field. And I have a lot of information here. Then I have a inning field, which has all the over by team. And uh, then I have this stage file location, row number, uh, you know, the hash key. Now there is a one file missing and we would like to know why the one file is missing. And if you have not seen how to debug your data loading, I would request you to go and watch my data loading playlist. And this playlist has more than 10 videos, which will help you to understand everything about data loading in Snowflake.
so a must watch playlist let's go back to the home page and try to click on a copy tab from the table tab so here is my raw schema and this is my tables menu and when i click on the match raw table it says it has 2.4k rows and 19.6 mb data size when i click on the copy history and when i hover it says one failed now i can click here and i can click on the failed 64933 json file has failed and i do not know why it has failed so it says that error parsing json duplicate object attribute non strikers and the line position is 4063 followed by 27 so the line number 4063 and 27 is the position let's open the file and see what is the problem this is my file 64933.json so i have to go to line number 4063 let me scroll down so my vs code editor is already highlighting that there are two non striker so what i am going to do i am going to remove this one of the non striker and try to reload the data even though my metadata has a history for this file let's try to reload this file and let me use my snow site web ui to load the data so i got the 64933.json.gzip and i can really remove the file so the file has been removed from the stage location alternatively i can also execute the put command with force option that will override this file now i will click on the files right now this time i am not loading the file as a gzip it is just a pure json file and i am clicking on the upload now this file got uploaded i will go back to my worksheet and without making any change i will just rerun this copy command the table metadata is already having the history of all the file which are loaded successfully now i'm going to re-execute this this time it loaded successfully and if i run the select statement i got 2411 and if i go back to the raw table it says 24 and here i can see the total 2412 files got loaded one failed and we know why one failed and this is say that 64933.json file is just reloaded even if you give the json file.gzip with the same name the snowflake will understand that this file failed in the last run and it will reconsider the file and if you want to forcefully push the file you can use the force option so we managed to load the data into our raw layer so if you click on a data preview it will show the first 100 record out of total record and here it clearly shows that i have stored the metadata under meta column info under info column innings under any column and then i have some extra audit column and if i go to the column i have total seven columns and out of seven columns the meta is object info is variant and innings is an array you can also use variant for meta and any but when people say that you know have you done a table design for your json file or a semi structure file you can always give this example and you can always explain why you have used different kind of a data type instead of using variant for everything right in the next step we are going to extract the individual element and try to flatten the data into a more structured format rather than keeping the data in object format because it is a little hard to query the object as you have to remember the column name and their access pattern we got the stage data loaded into raw tables and failed files are also corrected next we will analyze the individual columns by running select statement We'll find out how to extract different elements from those different kind of semi-structured data, how to clean the data, and how to store the curated content in single or multiple tables. If you look into our match raw table, it has one record per JSON file. And from this layer onwards, the data set will diverge and we will follow some kind of data modeling technique to store the data in more logical manner. There are many ways to design and structure the data we are dealing with and you may find a better solution or more appropriate after seeing my approach. Feel free to share your approach or a design gap you notice via comment box. For data analysis, we will focus on a raw layer table 
and post analysis we will design one or a more tables inside the clean layer schema and populate the data set since we are dealing with semi structured data we will use lateral and flatten function heavily if you have not seen any real example of a lateral or a flatten function i would request you to watch my flatten function video that will solidify your knowledge so let's go to our snow site web ui and i am also going to take help of json visualizer because this visualizer helps me to extract the path and its pattern so i don't have to really do a trial and error before i access uh, any individual element from the json file or from the variant column this is my new worksheet called 3.1 clean zone and i have already changed my context so it is cricket.clean let me show you all the columns of match raw table so the first column is meta second is info third is inning the first meta column is object type and the information this object holds is data version created date and revision so if you look into the meta column it has no real domain value it is just a column that captures the json file version or a data version and since it is an object type here is the select statement that can extract each element from the object data type now this is the column name followed by open and close bracket and this is the key against which the value is stored and to extract the value i have to specify the key text in the single quote i am type casting the value into a text and then give alias called data version similarly the created field is a date field and alias is created and third value is revision text and it is a number and this is the value now let's execute this select statement so if i click on the data version this is a text type created field date type and revision is this now if i change from small r to capital r for the third field let's see what happens it is not able to extract the information and that's why it has brought the null value and this is the nature of any key value pair data structure if the key is not found then the select query will bring null value let's see what happens in the query profile so the query profile is pretty straightforward it has scanned the table and it has really fetched the result on the screen now it is also possible that your json structure may have a incorrect value if i try to give a number data type to the text value let's say what happens so it clearly says that 1.0.0 is not recognized as a numeric value so you have to be very careful assigning the data type when you are fetching the data from the semi structure data set now let's try to extract the different element from the info column an info column is of variant data type so to extract the data from the variant column we cannot follow the way we have followed the data extraction from the object data type before we go to our query worksheet let's quickly analyze what all information we can fetch it from our info column so this is my info column which has 10 element and many of this element may have sub element or may have another object so we will start with this element which are directly under my info column like ball per over city and here we have a ball per over city gender and so on to access each of this element we have to follow a pattern called info dot the name of the attribute here i have event attribute which is the child attribute of info element and it has two sub element which is name and match number so to, so to access name and match number we have to follow the info dot event dot name and info dot event dot match number now info also has an element called player of the match which is so this is just info dot player of the match and we know in cricket there is only one man of the match or player of the match and if i have to extract the players then i can really access this element which is players and we know there are two teams so to extract two teams i have to access info dot players dot india this is a dynamic value so i do not know by looking at the data which all team have played this game so this value i have to extract from somewhere else so this will be a tricky element and we will see how to extract this information but once you go inside this team and who all played from this team i can click on this element 
and for that i have to access info.players.india followed by the index number if i go to this player then it says that players.india with index 10 we know in cricket each team has 11 players now if you go to the teams which is another sub element of info element it is an array data type so if i scroll down here so if you look into the line number 106 i have a team and team holds an array and this array has the first element is india and second element is england and if india has played the first inning england has played the second inning that is how this names are organized in this file but we will see if this is the pattern which is followed in all other JSON file. So once we know which is the team A and which is the team B, then we can access some of the dynamic element like players.india followed by the index. It will give me all the players who has played. However, if you look into the people element, it, it has all the people from both the team and this is ordered alphabetically. Okay. And they have a unique key assigned which can be used for some other mapping purpose. Let's go back to our worksheet and start extracting this element based on the pattern what we have learned here. This is my select query on match raw table and info is my variant column and with the colon notation I can extract the sub element from the variant column. So here match type season team type overs city and venue okay. Let's quickly run and analyze the data set for those 2400 plus matches. So I have no issue on the match number. If you look into this value, it has extracted the match number type from all the JSON file without any issue. This is all ODI. You don't need to scroll down. You can simply check this profiling. So match type number, the value start from 1927 and it goes up to 4688. If you look into the match type, it is all ODI. So all the 2411 records has only single value, value ODI. So we have a T20, we have a test matches, but in this analysis, we are only having ODI. Now, if you look into the season, it is start from 2006, 14, 23. And if I click on that, it will fetch the detail. Team type is all international. So overs. So if you look into that overs, all the overs are filled. There is no empty field. If you look into the city, if I click on city and if I scroll down, I can see a lot of places and there are other 439 entries are there but from this column i can see there are cities which are null so so we can decide if i do not have a city value what should i do now finally i have a venue and when i see venue here i have a 294 more entries are there and if you look into this harare sports club and uh, shere bangla national stadium or a sydney cricket ground maximum entries belongs to this venue and let's see if i have any uh, null value for the venue So from this analysis, I can see the city is a column where I have to, if I have to keep the null value, yes. Otherwise, I can replace with the text called NA, not applicable or not available, or I can replace with venue. After analyzing all the data set, this is my final select query, which captures the detail at match level. So let me execute the query and then explain the outcome and why I have followed certain expressions to bring the value what I wanted for my table so my first column is a unique number which is a match type number second column is an event name so here event name is also available one to one mapping and if i go back to my json this is my event name info semicolon event dot name and dot match number so here i have info dot semicolon event followed by name and it is a text field so here i have written a case statement if it is null then it will have a value called any and if you look into this match stage here i have a final because sometime it is not a number it is basically a final match or semi-final match right so either it will take the match number or it is a taking a match stage or then you will have a not applicable so you have to make sure that you put a case statement and here since match number is a numeric number however this column cannot take a numeric number because sometime it is a stage in the game now third is the event date so i am considering the first event date since we are dealing with a one day international obviously i have to take the first index from the dates here i can see the date and when i hover it is a date field 
then for my analysis purpose i have really extracted year month and day from the same information uh, from the date and this i have put it as a date year month if you look into the date column you can clearly see the here I have an event year starting from 2002 to 2013. Lot of matches are visible here. And the month where maximum number of matches are played is generally March or here in the month of July, June, July. Okay. And these are the different days. So this is this distribution is clearly representing the nature of these three columns. Then match type we have seen. It is a ODI. It's a straightforward like info dot match type. Then we have a season. So season is also straightforward and then team type it is an international or non-international the number of overs and city we have seen when you we have seen now if I look into the teams teams first team and second team so this is a first team and this is a second team so if I go to the result here first team and second team so first team is Zimbabwe second team is India here it is first team is Australia second is India India South Africa England Sri Lanka so this is how the first team and second team information is extracted from the team's element. I come to the JSON. Outcome is wrapping another object. Immediate element of outcome is winner. That will give you the name of this one. And in cricket, you can win by run, you can win by wicket, or it is a tie or cancelled. Uh, so all those information will come here, and that's what I have a case statement. So if you look into the case statement, if if outcome dot winner is not null, then the result is declared. If outcome result is tie then it is tie if outcome result is no result then it is no result otherwise at the end it will display the result okay and if you look into the result here so here it is no result if the no result it might be cancelled or something has happened and you can certainly go back and check in the internet what has happened to this particular game on 2016 between england and sri lanka okay good so this is my result now if outcome is not null then I am just putting the value not applicable for the winner because if outcome is not declared then you can't put a winner then if you want to capture who won the toss then you should do info.toss.winner text and it is giving me so if we look into toss decision which is inside my info toss decision I'm just using a function to capitalize the first field so bad field bad and this is how so if I really click on this particular field let's see it should have only two values so it should have a total two value so this is good okay all the fields which are part of this select query is one to one mapping with the event which is a match here so the match itself is an event and then each of the ball in the match is another sub event of the main event right. so we are going to create a table called match detail clean table and this table will store all the data which is at match level and match itself is an event if you would like to extract some more information about like umpire and uh, referee you can also add it but for now these are the information which i'm going to store in this table so let me execute this statement and i'm making sure that i'm also pulling those stage file name stage file row number hash key and modified date for debugging purpose okay so I am creating a table using as a select statement and there are many ways that you can create a table. If you are interested to know more about power of table and table design, I would request you to go and watch this playlist which provides all the information about the temporary table, permanent table. It says table is created. Let's quickly review how the query profile looks like. So it is a two step process. This is step one and this is step two. So we'll start with step two. Here it has scanned the table, create table as a select. So select a statement is executed here and then the result is shown on the screen. And as a part of this entire process, a table is also created. And if you look into the statistics, uh, it has read the total nine partition because it has to read the entire data set. And it took roughly 532 millisecond to complete the execution. And if I go to the data tab, so here this is my match detail clean table it has 2.4k record and if i click on a data preview so this is how the data looks like and if i click on a copy history we do not have any copy history because the data is not populated using a copy command looks good and if i click on a column it has total 24 column and 
since it is created using the select statement the create table has already taken the data type based on the result creating a table using a select statement is not a very appropriate approach when you are trying to do a production grade application because sometime you may get a different data type as the new data arrives or your data type inference might be wrong and snowflake might have inferenced the data type based on the limited data set i would not suggest to create a production grade table using a select statement um, because it might be misleading if you are not working on the complete data set we have extracted the match level information now the next match level information is the players so the player belongs to team so our next target is to extract the teams and along with the team we will also extract the players within the team and if you look into this structure we have a players as an attribute and inside the player i have the team a and team b and these teams are having their respective players so let's go back to our snow site worksheet and here we are going to use the flatten function so this is my team element which can be accessed from info.teams and from info.teams i can extract the team value and if i have to access the players i can go to the players within the player i have a team as a key and values are nothing but a player so we will see how this flatten function can be used to extract this two set of information so this is my match raw table i have given a alias called raw and this is my raw dot info because this is my alias and this is my info as a variant column and this is my match type number players and teams let's execute this sql statement so this is my team number and this is my players this is my player and this is my teams now i have taken a specific match type so it will be easy for us to understand how the json file looks like and we can validate the data so this is new zealand and south africa and these are my different teams so new zealand has 11 team members and south africa also has 11 team members so what we want for this match number 3866 we would like to flatten the team so we will have a new zealand and south africa will be two individual rows and for each of this team we have the player so if you look into the line number 27 here i have used a keyword called lateral and then i am using another table function called flatten and this flatten takes an object which is nothing but this player you here you can see it is highlighted and now this lateral function will perform a join operation let me use the same match now first i will use this entire table and try to print the star means it will print all the column here this is the key so i have to extract the key and why i have to extract the key because if you look into this element these are individual keys within the array so when i am going to flatten it each of this attribute will be treated as a key so i got my key so what i'm going to do i will just comment this and i will uncomment that so it is p dot key which is my alias converting into text data type and giving an alias called country so here this is my match number and this is my country looks good so far now in the next version i have to explode the team and here i have written so i can see team dot star input is p dot value now the next information we have to extract from the player attribute where my key is the country name and value is all the players so when i am going to use a flatten function for players attribute i have to use value instead of key but before that let's try to run a flatten function so here is my flatten function where i am taking this value p and on the p i am taking all the values and this is giving a alias name called team and let's print the team dot star first for the same match id i can see the value is available here because it is index 0 1 2 3 4 and if i look into this this is an array so this is not a key value pair so i have to use value as an element so if i just comment this line and uncomment this here i am taking a value and let me execute it because this is a player name so i got all the players so there are total 22 players 11 for each of the team so all the values are flattened and i am able to extract i am able to extract the team a and team b and respective players for each of this team 
okay now finally i would like to create a table which is called player clean table and this table will have your match type number country and the player i can also give a country name or the team name okay let's give it because since we are dealing with odi matches i think country should be the right name but you can if you wish you can also change it and since i am getting the data from the raw table i would prefer to have this audit column so if i have some odd values i can always go and check the row number or the file name or the version of the file okay now let me create this table i have to use the alias name here so my table got created successfully and let's describe the table so if you look into the table everything is a null value where it should not have a null value and there is no primary key and there is no unique key so i can run an alter statement where i specify my match type country and player name should not be null so let me execute this now if i describe this table so these are my not null value honestly speaking this should also not be null and i can if you wish you can also make it not null now i am going to create a foreign key relationship with my between player table and match table and the match number in both the table should have and the match type number should create a link so let me alter this table and add a constraint now i am going to create a relationship between my match clean table and the player clean table using this match type number so since the, the first table does not have a primary key the snowflake does not allow to create a reference we have to first create a primary key in the match table then we can create a referential integrity in the player table so for that so i'm creating a primary key on my match clean table so it is created successfully now let's execute this foreign key relationship so this also got executed successfully now let's describe the table so as we have learned the foreign key relationship is not displayed through the describe table for that we have to use the get ddl statement and here i can see the foreign key relationship exist looks good if you look into this table structure this three combination also should be referred as a primary key if you want we can create a composite key but for now we are not going to do that you can also use a tool called dbweaver to understand relationship between tables by doing the reverse engineering and that's what i am going to do here i am already connected with my snowflake instance and if i right click and say view diagram so it has built the relationship and if you hover on the relationship it says that match type number matches with match type number in a match detail clean so this is a child table and this is a parent table and this is how the relationship looks like good let's go back to snow site and check how the data looks like i have close to 53.1k rows and this is how the profile looks like so if i go to the table tab this is my copy history and copy history does not have any data set because copy history does not have any information because this data is populated through the insert statement and if i look into the data preview this is how the data looks like so i have my stage location name stage file hash key and the row number and if i look into the columns i have total seven column start with match type number country and the player name looks good so now from one json file we populated data into our raw table from the raw now the data has come to the clean schema where we managed to create match detail clean and player clean table so in this part we are going to work with enings we have already extracted two different table information from this info object now ening is an array so here is my open bracket and here is my closing bracket and inside that i have two enings and this is how it looks like and inside each ening i have all the balling detail we will consider each ball as an event now let's expand the first element if you look into this first index value 
this is my zeroth index i have a team as a key text and the value for this team is india and i have a number of overs if team has played 30 overs then i will have a total 30 entries if team has played 50 over it will have a 50 entries this is the power play detail and the power play detail is another array now if i click on to the second element the structure of the second element is very similar to the structure of the first element okay here this is team india here this is team england the number of overs are also matching and this is a power play now if you have a value called target it means that this team is playing the second inning and this team has played the first inning so this is so based on this json structure you can define the business rule and accordingly you can extract the necessary information now if you come to the visual form this is my inning generally in a one day international cricket we have two innings the first team is india the second team is england and you can see this relationship and india team has n number of overs for simplicity i have kept two overs and then this is my power play information and inside the power play i have from this to that from this to that and from this to that and type is a mandatory and this is the additional information if you want you can extract this information if you go to the second team which is playing the second inning this is the number of overs followed by power play and followed by the target the target will be primarily for the second inning because they have to make 230 runs in 50 overs so if you find this target entry it means this team has played the second inning looks good now if you look into the over detail so this over has total six deliverables and each deliverables we have a batter followed by baller and followed by the non-striker so it has another attribute called run so here if you look into this i have a total six ball number one number two number three four five and six if you go further for each delivery so this delivery is nothing but an event for me and in every ball a team can score certain amount of run if you look into the nested element it is a batter extra and total okay if i see the actual file and if i take this particular example here the line number 795 is a batter and i have a baller and this is a non striker player and the run scored in this delivery is zero and there is a wicket so if there is a wicket you will get another entry called wicket but if there is no wicket then you will only see the run now here in this example if the batter has scored four run then it will show you that total number of runs is scored by the batter is a four okay and the total run is a four and if there is an extra you will see extra and another classic example of a run out in a particular delivery so if you look into this particular 20th over in this match and if you look into this particular delivery so the team has lost a wicket and the kind of wicket is run out player who is out is mr mahesh so which is matching the non striker person and the filter is the name of the filter okay so this is another combination where we can really extract the necessary information how many run out has happened in this match if you take this example here i have one extra so total run in this delivery is one and what kind of extra is also classified in line number 1664 it is white ball and that's why one extra run has been given so one extra run is considered so if i look into this particular delivery this is the 22nd over in this 22nd over since there was one white i have total seven delivery one two three four five six and seven right so this is so in a json data structure you have a flexibility to add more and more element without too much worried about the schema right if it is a csv file then csv file structure will change here everything is driven by the key value pair and this is the power play information i have total three entries in the power play and this is the target right now it is very clear how this inning array is structured and how the sub element of the inning is now it is very clear how the individual element within the inning array is structured and we have to use a lot of flatten function to explore the information and create a structure table so each individual delivery will be represented by a row and within that row we will have a batter baller and non striker and we will also have what is the total score if there is an extra run or how much batter has scored so this entire thing has to be exploded in single row and if you look into this delivery the delivery is a part of overs and over is a part of inning and this is all an array so we will go back to our worksheet and see how we can use a flatten function and explode the detail 
this is my third worksheet called 3.3 clean zone and i already have set my context as a clean here i am going to execute the match type and this m dot innings and let's first execute this so i have a match number followed by overs if i click on that so i can see overs and lot more information looks good let me narrow down to a particular match so we would be able to validate and then insert the data <coughs> so i am working on the same match number let's run this so this is my value so if i look into this detail so on my first element this is my team overs power play team overs and power play and target so first i am going to explode the innings and for that let me copy this entire content so i have given the name i as an alias and let me run for this particular match id now let me execute for this match id so index 0 is a first inning index 1 is a second inning okay and since there is no content available in key and index i can use the values so from the values so from the values i can extract teams so value here is a variant column and uh, if i look into this value it is a variant column since it is a variant column i can use the colon notation and extract the team text let me rerun this version 2 so this is my new zealand and south africa looks good so so far we managed to explode the inning and i got the zeroth element and the first element now each team has played multiple overs and that is the one i am going to explode next if you look into this hierarchy so here this is my team and this i extracted and within the team i have multiple overs so i have to extract this number of overs using the flatten function and that's what i am going to do that so i am taking this i and from the i i am taking the value and extracting the overs which is nothing but another collection and here i will give o dot star and let's see what value does it bring so here total 68 overs are played and i can see within the over the deliveries are available right and if i go back to my visualizers so if i have to access zeroth over which is my first over i have to say innings zeroth index followed by over so i have to further explode overs and to further explode overs i have deliveries so i have a six deliveries or more than that per over so i can take this o alias i can have the values and use the deliveries as an input parameter and change this to d dot star and let's see that i have a total 68 overs multiplied by 6 or a 7 or 8 ball per over let's see what value does it bring so i have got total 450 balls now if i see for each delivery i have the batter baller so now this can be flattened to a single row so i am going to overwrite so if i see o which is nothing but over so i would like to know the value of the over this is first over zeroth over and then for all the rest of the information will come from my alias d and let me rerun this so if you look into this over column i have total seven balls it means there must be some extra if i look into this detail this is an extra and that's why we got total seven ball and uh, if you look into the batter the first three ball is played by this player and rest of the four balls are played by this and who is a baller so this is the baller so throughout the over this is the baller so our data looks pretty consistent here and if i go down so if i go down team name is south africa it has played total 33 overs so if the index is 33 it means that the number of over is 34 because index start with zero so right so that's why we have a total 68 overs in this game so if you calculate 68 overs multiplied by uh, 6 it will be total uh, 408 balls and there are some extra that has added additional ball to this number right so our overall data looks pretty good okay and now next we are trying to add additional information to this data set so we managed to extract the individual deliveries now the next thing is that how can i extract this information where i will capture what kind of extra the baller has given right so if you look into this the batter has scored one 
there was no ball that's why there is one extra run the total run scored in this delivery is two but what is not captured for what this extra is considered right so if i have to consider this i have to also use this extra inside the flatten but the challenge i have it if i use extra this extra is not available in every delivery okay so let's go back to our worksheet and try to understand how to extract this information so let's quickly see the result of this query so i have total 415 balls and here i can see some extra values now i would like to know what is the classification of this extra run so for that i am going to add called lateral function input this is my d so this is my delivery and i will take the value and from the value i will extract this extra and once i extract the extra let me print this e dot star right and now the number of rows reduced from 415 balls to 14 balls and if i see how this extra detail comes so my sequence number is there key is there path is there index and value so this is very clear that i have to use e followed by keys and i have to use e followed by values this way i can extract the type of extra and the actual value of this extra looks good to me however when i use a lateral function this is by default equijoin if i have to make sure that i have to do an outer join then i have to use a word called outer equals to true right and here i will use so this is my e dot key and the e dot value which is nothing but this e dot key and e dot value now with this outer equals to true and extracting the individual element let's see whether i should be able to get the 450 rows or not the notation is this now i got the 415 and i can see first over fourth ball of type whites okay so this is how i can calculate extra if there is no value then it is coming null and one thing i can do since my over start with a zero i can always have plus one so i can go and i can make this plus one and let's rerun this so now this is my first over this is my second over so this looks good similar to extra i have the wicket element and wicket element also does not happen for every delivery so in this case this wicket element happened on this delivery and it has some of this additional you know attribute which i want to extract as a part of my structure table so for that i have to use this wickets inside the flatten function with outer equals to true and capture this information in a single table let me go back to my worksheet so let me create a fifth version of the query now this wicket is also attached with a delivery and not with extra so i have written d dot value dot wickets this is going to create a temporary data set and this temporary data set will finally join with this result and here my outer is equals to true it means that if if a particular delivery does not have any wicket the record should still exist and i will have this player out kind of out and the filter go back to so what is a kind of out player who is out and who is a filter if there are multiple filter in a case of a run out then it will also be exploded but right now i'm not going that deep now let's run this query and it should again bring the 415 record as a result so i can see 415 rows are there which is good here no wicket let me scroll so this is bold and let me go down here caught and if you see this is coming as an object if i click on that this is also a variant data type so if you want you can also explore that but right now i'm not exploding it so now we managed to extract the necessary information for each delivery now based on this select statement i can create a table using a create as select statement as we have done in our previous part so I created the sixth version of the SQL and I'm creating a table called cricket.clean.deliveryclean table and the entire select statement is copied pasted here. 
I have excluded the where clause and now let me execute this create table statement along with the select query. So we have total 2411 matches. Uh, so the number of unique record in this table should have only 2411 and number of delivery in each match varies from match to match. So let's see how many data record does it bring. This may take a while. So now the table has been created successfully. And before I try anything, let's go back to the table tab and see how many record got populated. So this is my delivery clean table and it has 1.3 million rows and the total size is 11.0 MB. Now this is my structure. Let's see the column. So this is my match type team name over looks good. And if I click on the data preview, so this is my data preview and over start from one looks good. I have this run. And extra type is null, extra run is null, player out is null in many cases. Yeah, looks good. And if I go to the copy history, I do not have a copy history because copy history exists only when you have executed copy command. Going back to my worksheet, let's run a distinct on match type. So I have 2410 data set. Maybe something is wrong. One of the record is missing and we can always check it why a particular record is missing. Maybe there is some mismatch or invalid data. And that's what in a data engineering project, we spend a lot of time debugging and analyzing the data, why a particular record has been excluded. So let's describe this delivery table and see how does it look like. All the values are null, but we know that this value should not be null. We can set this not null value for all the important columns. So it says invalid identifier. Now let me create a relationship between delivery table and my match detail clean table based on this match type number and I have changed this delivery match ID as my constraint name. So they are all not null values looks good and I have this foreign key constraints available. Let me go and recreate this diagram. So I got my delivery clean table and the relationship is also drawn. And if I click on this relationship, it is match type. Here is it is here also it is match type. And here I have match type number, team over baller, and I can see all the data types. Looks good. So from the JSON file, we managed to create three different table, and this table will help us to create dimension and fact table in my final consumption layer. We populated data in three different tables, the match detail table, delivery table and player table. Before we move further, let's check our data quality so far. So for that, I have picked our match type number 4686, which represent India versus England on October 29th, 2023. So let me run this query from my clean schema. This is ICICI World Cup cricket. This is 29th match held on 29th of October. The city is Lucknow between India and England and result declared that India won the match and toss winner was England. Now go back and check in Google how the result looks like. So this is 29th October, India versus England and India won the match by 100 runs. This is statistics. And Rohit Sharma was man of the match. India scored 229, England 129, all out. And this is my score. Rohit Sharma 87, 
सूर्य कुमार यादव 49, नाइन के एल राहुल थर्टी नाइन एंड ऑन द अदर साइड दिस इज द इंग्लैंड स्कोर सो लिंग स्टोन ट्वेंटी सेवन डेविड मलान सिक्सटीन एंड अनदर डेविड विली सिक्सटीन सो लेट्स एग्जीक्यूट दिस एस क्यूल स्टेटमेंट विच इज रनिंग डायरेक्टली ऑन द डिलीवरी क्लीन टेबल दिस इज एन एग्रीगेटेड क्वेरी ऑन फोर सिक्स एट सिक्स मैच नंबर इंडिया स्कोर टू ट्वेंटी नाइन एंड इंग्लैंड स्कोर वन ट्वेंटी नाइन लुक्स गुड इफ आई एग्जीक्यूट दिस क्वेरी वेर आई एम ट्राइंग टू चेक स्कोर बाई इंडिविजुअल प्लेयर्स सो दिस इज माई इंग्लैंड टीम where i can see malan 16 and david willy 16 and here my living in stone 27 looks good on the other side rohit sharma 87 kl rahul 39 and yadav 49 which matches with this result looks good so we have validated data and the data quality looks good for now we got the data in our clean layer and they exist in three different tables now it is time to create fact and dimension tables our data set is not very large and we can also manage by creating multiple views but to explore how to derive fact and dimension table and understand the challenges appear when we design this table structure and order of execution to populate the data set our consumption layer should be able to answer a lot of question that a business user or an analytics user wants to know for example when the match was played which team competed in the match in which location did the match take place and all these answer recite in your match detail table the player table can answer this question how many matches player a played when it comes to delivery table we can ask question what is the total number of runs scored by team a in the first 5 overs if we combine all these three tables we can ask many more questions like what happened who did where did it happened and many how kind of questions by using this data set the match is an event and can be represented as a match fact table and it will be surrounded with date dimension table that will help to answer when a match happened how many matches played between these two dates or in a year referee team and player dimension will help to answer who played or which team won maximum number of matches during the certain period of time venue dimension can help with respect to where kind of a questions how many matches are played in a particular venue in this demo we are dealing with one day international so match type dimension will have only one entry but cricket matches come in different formats like test matches or t20 so all these dimension tables will be connected with match fact table then we also have a delivery fact table that will capture each delivery or a bowling event in this table and they will have relationship with the team dimension as well as player dimension this fact table will also be connected with match fact table as this event is a child of match event and that will be one to many relationship and each match will have n number of delivery so if you have done the dimensional modeling in the past you will have a clear understanding what are we talking about and if you have better design approach for this scenario feel free to share it via comment section if you look into the tables it is very clear that all the dimension table will be populated first and then followed by the fact tables as the fact table needs relationship key before it gets a data so we can start creating dimension table and then we will go for a match fact table followed by delivery fact table all the dimension table will be extracted using a distinct or a group by query from the data set available in our clean layer in a real life your dimension table may come from master data set and may not come from the transactional data set so this is my new worksheet called fact dimension table and i am using the context cricket dot consumption as my schema so this is my date dimension which has a date id full date followed by other information about the date dimension table let me quickly create this table so next dimension is a referee dimension which will have match referee reserve referee tv umpire and a field umpires okay it will have the referee type and it will have a referee name so let me quickly create this referee dimension table it's done next will be my team dimension which will have a team name and the team id 
it's done next dimension table is a player table it has player id as auto increment followed by team id and the player id because this is a child table of my team dimension table this got created now i am going to establish a relationship between my team dimension table and player dimension table and, and this is how i can run an alter statement to create this constraint it is done now i am going to create a venue dimension which has a venue id venue name and city we have seen city is null in many places but we will make sure when we push the data from our clean layer to consumption layer we will specify not applicable or not available as a text for city field for now i am just creating this additional field as a placeholder for this example we are not going to do that but if you know about each of this cricket ground and additional detail you can certainly fill that and do a different kind of analytics so when your dimension is created now going to match type dimension which will have only one entry it is also created now finally i am going to create a match fact table where match id will be auto incremented id so line number 74 to line number 75 will have the relationship with the dimension table then 80 onwards it will start capturing all the major values so total number of overs for this match the balls per over and here all the detail about the team a and here all the detail about the team b and finally from line number 101 who won the toss what was the toss decision and match result and the winner match id and then these are all the foreign key constraint which are required to build and establish a relationship let me quickly create this table so my table is created successfully so my fact table is created successfully before i really go and start populating data let's use our dbweaver community edition tool to draw the er diagram and visualize it how this relationship looks like so this is my clean layer let me draw the diagram so here is my match detail clean delivery clean table and player clean table so i did not follow the naming convention what i have followed for delivery and player it should have been match clean table rather than match detail clean now if i go to the consumption and click on a view diagram now if you look into this diagram it clearly shows all the relationship so i have a date dimension referee dimension team dimension player dimension match type dimension and venue dimension if i click on this relationship it is match id it is referee id here it is match type id this is your this is your venue id and if i start clicking this is my who won the toss team a team b and this is my winner team id so this is how we can draw the er diagram to make sure that our team members are very clear about what is the relationship between different dimension and fact table if i click here i can see i have all the dimension table available here so our fact and dimension table structure is ready in our consumption layer and we will extract the dimension table data using our detail table which exists in our clean layer and it will be based on description field as we do not have any master data set available in this demo in your project you may get a master data set as a separate entity and you don't have to run group by or distinct query on your transaction tables so let's start with the team dimension which is a simple dimension table so i have already written a query where i am fetching the first team and second team and doing a union and then running a distinct So if I run this query, it gives me all the country name, and I have to make sure that I run a testing query on the top of it. So this is the first version. Let's quickly see how many team comes. So I have around twenty-eight teams, and here you have an entry called Asia Eleven. icc world cup 11 so as per your project definition you can either exclude or you can include by applying a filter criteria but now i am just going to insert this record without any filtration so this is my team dimension and the auto increment value will be populated automatically so 28 record got inserted let's quickly check the data set so data looks good afghanistan africa asia australia and so on now the next is team player so let's execute a query on player clean table and let's see how does it look like 
So I have all the players, they belong to different countries. So I have to run a group by query where they belong to a different country, which is nothing but a team. So here Australia, Afghanistan and all the player name. And I can simply insert the data set into country, team ID and player for which I have to really make a join between team and players. So this is how the result like here I have a team ID and this is a player name and this is the team or a country name. Now let's insert the data into player dimension table by executing the same select statement. So 1892 players got inserted into my player dimension. Let's check how the data looks like. This is how the data looks like which has a player ID and each player belongs to a team specifically when they are playing for a team and this is the name of the player. Now let's talk about referee dimension and for the referee dimension let's see how the referee dimension looks like. So if you look into this JSON diagram we have something called official and official belongs to root followed by info followed by official and in the official we have match referees, reserve referees, TV umpires and umpires. And if I have to access the match referees, I can go to root.info.official.matchreferees. And similarly, I can also go to reserve umpires. And these are all array. So if you look into the umpire, which is my first zeroth index, and the second umpire is my first index. And let's go and check do I have the referee detail in my clean table? I have not captured the referee detail. However, if I go to this info section, so I still have the referee detail available, but it is available in the raw format. Now, as we have seen, if I have to access the referee detail, I have to query on the raw table because my clean table does not have this data set. And for this demo purpose, we'll keep the referee table empty for now. Uh, however, I would like to show how can you fetch the detail and insert the detail into the clean layer. So this is the individual element which we can extract using this query. So for now, I am keeping the referee dimensional table empty and we'll put zero as an ID when we are going to create a fact table. I would love to see how do you create this dimension table and how would you insert the referee type and the referee value in this dimension table and create a reference with fact table. Now coming to the venue dimension, uh, let's see how the venue details are visible. So here is my venue and here is my city. Some places city is empty, but venue is available for all the matches. Now I can just run this query to check how my data looks like. So this is my first 10 rows. Now if I do a group by, this is how the data will come. Wherever city is empty, I will keep the city. So I need to decide whether I have to keep the city empty or I have to fill a value. Again, as per your business requirement, you can decide. So what I'm going to do for a city, if it is null, then I'm making it any. Otherwise, it is coming as a city and this value I am inserting it. Okay, let's insert it. So 315 rows inserted into the venue dimension table. Now the match type, we know there is only one match type in our data set, which is one day international. So let's quickly check this statement. And I got only one entry ODI. If you want, you can put it one day international or you can just keep it ODI. This is again as per your requirement. Let me insert this data set. Next, we are going to populate the date dimension for that I'm just checking what is my minimum date and what is my maximum date in my data set. So my minimum date is December 29, 2002 and my maximum date is 31st October 2023. It means that I need every single entry starting from 2002 to 2023. I have already written a snowpark utility which populated data set into my date dimension table. You can also use a stored procedures. However, for a simplicity, I have written a hard coded way of populating this data set. And let me show you how I have done that. So I am creating a table called date range table, which will have data starting from 2000 until 2023. 
and let me create this table for you so this table got populated now i am just inserting data starting from 1st january 2002 december 2023 so let me populate this temporary table total 8766 record got inserted into my transient date range table so i am using this date range table and extracting all the necessary information using window function let me run this insert statement so 8766 record got inserted let me quickly run a query so this is how the data looks like this is my full date day month year quarter weekday and you have this saturday sunday which is weekend through and all other monday to friday weekend falls if i look into this data profiling here i say true and false so overall it looks good saturday sunday total four entries so all my data got populated let's quickly go and check the data tab if i look into the date dimension it has total 8.8k record if i look into the data this is how the data looks like if i go to match type match type has only one id if i go to the player dimension it has close to 1.9k record if i go to the referee dimension right now it is empty if i go to the team team dimension it has total 28 teams and if i go to the venue dimension this is how it looks like most of the data set is null because we have not populated but venue and city name both are available looks good now the next we are going to populate match fact table and we'll go step by step to see how we can create a relationship and populate the data into the match fact table so before we populate lot of data let's try to narrow down our query and understand how we can generate the fact table data set first i am again picking my 4686 data set which is a world cup match between india and england and this number will help us to validate whether our data population is happening correctly or not so first i will start with a date id and to get the date id i have to join match detail clean table with my date dimension and i have applied this where clause which i can remove any point of time so let me execute this query so match id 4686 i have got 8703 date id and referee id is 0 because i am not using any referee for this demo now i need to get the first team and second team for that i have joined my team dimension twice one with first team dimension and second team dimension and here let me copy paste this match id so this match has happened between england and india let's see what result does it bring so the team id is 22 and team id is 12 and let's quickly go and check so the 22 is india here and this is a 12 which is england so so far looks good now third the match type which is one day international and again i am changing this id so for that i am joining match type dimension on a match type versus match type from my detail table so i have only one match id so this looks good now next we are going to get the venue id from the venue dimension table for the same 4686 this should be lucknow so this is 176 i still have one record so since i am getting only one record at match event level this looks good so next we are going to populate additional information and i am using some hard coded values because i did not have this data set available in my clean layer this is a match level detail each match has a total 50 overs So if you look into this overs and balls per over this detail is not fully populated in my clean table that's why i'm making a hard coded approach now however in your real life you can populate this data set into your clean table and get the data done. now first i have to get the data for my team a where how many overs they have played for that so here i have joined my delivery clean table and from this table i am getting the team a and team b detail where it clearly fetches how many overs team a has played how many over team b has played and for that i have used a case statement max and sum let me execute this query so if you look into the total run scored by team a is 129 which is england here and extra run is 8 and if i go 
and team B played only 35 overs. This is the team A which is scored 229 and here if you look into this scorecard here it is 229 50 overs and it is 129 34.5 overs which matches with my result. Now since my query is growing what I have done to get the wicket detail I have to again get the wicket detail from my delivery where I would say if my team name matches with first team and if there is a player out then it will be counted as a 1 else it is 0. So that is how I am fetching the wicket and let me run this query. So India lost 9 wicket and England lost 10 wickets in this match which matches with this number 9 here and England lost 10 wickets. Finally, I am fetching this M toss winner and M toss decision. This is directly coming from my clean table. So I don't have to put an additional effort here. Uh, let's quickly run this query. So here England won the toss and decided to field. Okay. So now I have combined all my select clause and going to insert the result of this select statement into my match fact table. Let me run this statement it is possible that some of this record may not be fetched because we have really not validated every data set with respect to its consistency so i have commented this line where i was looking for india england match now let me select this statement and run the query so it says 1993 record got inserted and we started with 2411 matches now let me quickly run the select statement with match id equals to 4686. So this is my India, this is my England match type 1 looks good and if I see so this is a field this is result declared and the winner of the team is 22 which is India and the toss winner is 12. So this record is coming properly. So we managed to populate our fact and dimension table and now all the queries what I have written we can wrap it into a stored procedure and call them through the task and if you do not know how to really create an end-to-end -end ETL I would request you to go and watch this particular video which explain everything starting from how to create a task and how to wrap a stored procedures. Okay. So we have completed the match fact table and this relationship is wrong. The rest of the relationship looks good. Now next we are going to populate delivery fact which will have a relationship with player dimension and the team dimension as well as it will have a foreign key relationship with the match fact and for each of the match we will have close to 500 to 600 balls per match event. Let's go back to our snow site worksheet and start writing SQL statement to populate delivery fact table. So again taking an example of 4686 which is India England match and this is my delivery clean table. Let's quickly see how the data looks like for all the delivery for this particular match. So it has total 518 balls if I look into the over for India. So India has played all the 50 over England which was chasing in this game has played only 34.5 balls good so there are roughly 14 overs less so i have made a note of 518 deliveries so now we are going to perform a join operation to populate our delivery fact table so the first join is happening on my team dimension and here i am comparing team name versus team name between these two table for the same match number and just to validate whether I am getting the right data or not, I am printing the team name here. So this is my team ID and this is my team name. So far looks good. Number of records 518 again. Next version of the query will have the player ID. I have a baller, I have a batter and non-striker. And again I am joining to replace the name with an ID. I have to use the player dimension table and check the name of the baller, batter and non-striker and perform a join operation. Let's run this query. So here I can see this is my player name who is nothing but a baller here and then player 2 and uh, this is my player 3 looks good. 
So I forgot to give the alias name, that's why it is coming like this. Okay. Now, once IDs are available from my dimension table, I can really add the different measurement. And let me run this. Here I would change. So let me execute this query. So I have total 518 rows. Looks good. And uh, this is my non striker, over runs, extra run, and extra type. Looks good so far. Now, I just want to make sure that I do not have a null value. So here I have added some case statement. So I have removed all unwanted column and added the measure in more meaningful way. So now I can see for different line item, which is 518, I have over number, runs, extra runs, extra type, player out and player out kind. Now, if you look into my delivery fact table, it has a match ID, team ID, baller ID, batter ID, non striker ID, over runs, extra runs, extra type, player out and player out kind, whether it is a LBW or run out, all those information will sit in this column. And I have this relationship. So let me create this table. So my fact table is created. Now I am going to execute this insert statement and I have removed the where clause and I have total 2000 matches 600 ball on an average per match then it will come 1.2 million record and let's execute it so 2.110655 records got uploaded and if I go back to my db -ver, let's see how the relationship looks like if you look into this relationship this is my delivery fact table so delivery fact is having relationship with my team so this is my team id then this is my match id and this is my baller id batter id and non striker id looks good so now we populated all the fact tables and all the dimension table or now i can create my dashboard based on this data set so next step we'll see how we can create a dashboard using this data set So we managed to load the data in our internal stages then it has moved into the raw tables and then from the raw table it has gone to different tables within the clean layer and finally from the clean layer we have written a SQL statement to populate data into match fact and delivery fact tables. Now data is available in our consumption layer for consumption. So now we can visualize the data by creating some dashboard and I am not going to cover how to create a dashboard but let me quickly go dashboard tab. Here I have already created two dashboard. Let me start with match analysis dashboard. Here I am taking the same example of India versus England match. So here you can create a different widget and as per your requirement you can have different charts and visualization available. If you do not know how to create a dashboard I would request you to go and watch this particular video as well as the second video where I have explained how to create a filter as well as how to create a different widget. So this is the dashboard which covers India versus England match and this is the total score. This is the per over score which is a running score and this is runs per ball. Now let me go back to another dashboard. So if I open my dashboard which has a filter and if you look into this on a particular year I am trying to understand how many matches are played, total runs is scored by all team, total wicket taken by all teams and this is the detail of the different match IDs, match date, team A, team B, their score and the winning team. And if I just apply this filter and check it for example 2015 where we had the World Cup and click on apply. So it has reloaded the data. So I have total 100 matches played during this year. 49,000 runs were scored and 1,326 wickets were taken. So this is how you can create a Snowflake dashboard or you can use any other BI tools like Power BI or a Tableau or a Looker to create a nice dashboard based on this fact and dimension table. Now let's automate the data flow by using task and task tree. We will just load the data using SnowSight web UI load feature. And once it is loaded, the rest of the data processing flow will happen automatically using task objects. We have already seen how to automate the data flow in our end-to-end -end ETL video. 
so i would not go through the object creation process and to save time i have already created the object and we will review the sql script we have created a tag or so called direct acyclic graph using snowflake tasks the first task run on every 5 minute the job of this task is to just run a copy command and load the data from stage location to the raw schema the next task runs only after the load json to raw task is completed and data is available for processing to capture the continuously arriving of new data set three append only streams are created on the top of raw table if you are not completely familiar with stream object i request you to go and watch this particular video the next three task extract the information from stream object and run insert statement into the clean layer inside match player and delivery tables and then from here there are three parallel task that populate data into dimension table and finally there are two task in sequence that load the data in fact table if you feel that you want to run some of the task in sequence or some of the task in parallel it is your design decision based on your requirement so this is the complete data pipeline using task in snowflake before we see the data flow in action let's quickly review the sql script which has created this entire dag if you look into the line number 15 16 and 17 here we are creating a stream object and these stream objects are created on a same table match raw table and the type of stream is append only because we are constantly loading json file through our isno site web ui now we could have done with a single stream the stream does not add any overhead so for each logical purpose i can create different stream that makes my overall transformation much simpler and easy to manage once my streams are created on my match raw table which is at the raw layer i am going to run a task on every 5 minutes and this task will simply run a copy command and this copy command will only pick the newly arrival json data from this stage location and it will insert the json data into my match raw table once the data is inserted all the new changes can be tracked through this stream and eventually we can populate match player and delivery tables in the clean layer next we are going to create another task which depends on the first task so this is my first task which is load json to raw and from here i am going to run load to clean match which will simply run the same select statement with insert query the only thing is that it is going to pick the data from my stream rather than my raw table likewise my next step is to load to clean player followed by load to clean delivery so these are the three task which will run one after another and they will consume the data from the stream object and it will run exactly the same select statement what we have seen earlier and run insert the newly arrived data into this clean table once data is loaded into the clean table then i have another task which says that which is load to team dimension and this depends on the clean delivery and here populating another dimension table load to player dimension depends on load to clean delivery and here the third dimension table venue dimension depends on load to clean delivery so all those three dimension table data population will happen side by side and they will run in parallel once the data is loaded into the dimension table we are going to create another task which will again run the insert statement using a select statement and this select statement is slightly tweaked to get the delta by joining the existing fact table followed by the clean layer and finally populate the data inside the fact table and finally we have this load delivery fact table which depends on the load match fact task and once the match fact table is populated the load delivery fact is also populated and to make sure that you have a necessary rights to resume the task you have to run this grant statement and then you have to start from the child most task and go up to the parent most once all those things are resumed as soon as you upload the data snowflake stage location the entire pipeline will consume the data without any human intervention so we load the data using snow site web ui the first task load json to raw runs and picks the data from the stage location and copy command is executed 
as shown here on the screen. And on successful execution, the status looks green since it runs on every 5 minutes, multiple instances of the task shown here. From load JSON to raw task, there are three sequential tasks, clean match, clean player and clean delivery task. And since it works on stream object, if stream object does not have any data, it skips the task execution. If there is any failure, the snowflake records the failure and this screen showed the failure with the reason. After clean delivery task is done, the snowflake start three parallel tasks, player dim, team dim and venue dim. And once these tasks are completed, it loads the match fact table. And once the match fact table is loaded, it actually loads the load delivery fact table. And if the task is running, you can see the status, the task is running. And this is how you automate your entire data pipeline, which runs as per your frequency definition. So this is how a small scale end-to-end -end data engineering project looks like in the context of a Snowflake Cloud Data Warehouse. And if you can manage to ingest data from any kind of source system to a Snowflake stage location, process the raw data into curated data and finally design a semantic layer where business can consume data without too much of technical or SQL complexities and perform analytical operation, you can claim that you have 80 to 80 5% familiarity with Snowflake data engineering work. I hope you have gained good amount of knowledge from this session. Feel free to provide your valuable feedback via comment section. And yes, don't forget to press the like button. Thank you for watching and happy learning and keep growing.